feel very honored to give, have a chance to give this talk. And uh, I'm now a postdoc at Ohio State University, and my super advisor uh, is the Professor Yin Wu. And uh, my top title today is the design of suboxide batteries and efficient low cost electrochemical energy storage. And first, the brief background and with ever increasing demand for superior electrochemical and storage device, uh, people have invented various alternatives to current the commercial lithium ion batteries due to the limited energy store density and limited lithium source. And among them, uh, the metal air batteries has attracted more and more attention because it's ultra high theoretical energy store and the density and abundant oxygen source on Earth. And among them, the uh, we should I should uh, notice the, the potassium oxygen batteries, which was invented by our group in 2013. And typically, for the pre in principle, we have used a metallic potassium anode, a potassium metal as anode, and using the oxygen as a cathode, and using another uh, carbon paper or carbon fiber as a gas diffusion layer. And uh, during discharge process, the oxygen would be first be reduced to generate the suboxide anion and combine the potassium ion to form the potassium suboxide solid on the cathode. And uh, during charging process, it corresponds to the decomposition of the potassium suboxide and release the oxygen again. And you should notice that the, our proposed potassium oxygen batteries are characteristic of the one electron transfer process with uh, high reaction kinetics without any catalyst, which is different from the multiple electron transfer, in, such as in lithium air, zinc air, and fuel cell with the multiple electron transfer and also need high efficient catalyst to boost the reaction to happens. And also the energy density of our proposed potassium oxygen batteries is also three times higher than that of the current lithium ion batteries. And you may have a more clear impression when I just compare the lithium oxygen and our proposed, proposed uh, potassium oxygen batteries. And the, the typical voltage profiles, you can see the red one of the uh, potassium oxygen batteries. Uh, they are very small voltage gap between discharge and charging process that in case of very high energy efficiency. But for the lithium oxygen batteries, we can see a huge polarization, especially on the charging process. Uh, for the mechanism, you can see, although for the lithium oxygen batteries, oxygen also first get to be, uh, be reduced to generate the lithium suboxide, but the unstable lithium suboxide would occur the self disproportionation to generate the lithium oxide. And for the charging process, it corresponds to the direct the oxidation of lithium oxide to release oxygen. And the reactive lithium suboxide would trigger a sign of reactions on the electrolytes and electrolytes and result in the high over potential and the low energy efficiency for the batteries. But in comparison for our proposed lithium potassium oxygen batteries, it corresponds only one single electron transfer process. And because we know the uh, uh, potassium suboxide is both dynamically and thermodynamically stable, the product. So that would, uh, that would allow only one electron transfer with high reaction kinetics that would result in the uh, low over potential and high energy efficiency of above 95% for the potassium oxygen batteries. So at the beginning of the talk, I want to the, clarify the misconsumption prop, uh, property by the lamp suboxide. The question is that, is suboxide really super reactive in the potassium oxygen batteries? Uh, this is a typical the voltage profile of the potassium oxygen batteries. We would first, first monitor the morphology change on the oxygen castle. This is a printing the carbon paper, the cathode uh, uh, carbon paper we use. It consists of the carbon fiber. And after the discharging process, we could see a lot of the numerous uh, cubic potassium suboxide, the solid filling the voids of the carbon paper. After charging back, we can see the all, almost all the numerous uh, the potassium suboxide solid are disappeared and only a thin film residue 
uh, can be found on the cathode. And this is a residue of sine products. So our last question is that, how, uh, what is the sine products? Uh, unfortunately, we, with the help of the OMR, we can easily identify the byproduct as the formate acetate as the, and the potassium fluoride as the main uh, byproduct. This is not difficult to understand because I have mentioned that for the mechanism during the discharge process, the oxygen first be get electron to be reduced to generate the, the superoxide anion. And superoxide anion is a strong nucleic phi that will easily attack the solvent and the salt to induce the, the sign reactions. So we know that the main, this, the main the reaction involves in the, uh, the cubic, the potassium superoxide, the formation and decomposition in the potassium oxygen batteries, and also accompanied by the, uh, a sign of the products, uh, the formation in our proposed uh, potassium oxygen batteries. So another question comes that, can we quantify our main product, the potassium superoxide? So the next, we use the titanium oxide sulfate titration method to quantify the potassium superoxide formation and decomposition upon cycles. And also further, we after correlating the electron path and the formation, the decomposition of potassium superoxide uh, during, during the cycles, we could obtain, calculate the ratio of the electron to potassium superoxide. The ratio value is around uh, 1.02, and both discharge and charging process. That gave us uh, information is that it does indicate a single electron transfer process, and most uh, capacity comes from the formation and decomposition of potassium superoxide during cycles. And we further use the differential, the electrochemical mass spectroscopy damp stack technique to monitor the possible gas evolution during the charging, the potassium superoxide process. And as a result shown here, we can say there's only the oxygen, the, the red circle, there's only oxygen evolution without any the carbon dioxide evolution. And also after correlating um, the relationship between the electron and the, and the gas evolution amount, we can calculate the, the ratio of the electron to oxygen. The ratio is also approaching to the theoretical value of the one. That indicates that the chemistry on the castle is relatively clean. It's only, and it's also only involves in the oxygen evolution during the charging process. So as NAS, we have ever or have estimated the potassium superoxide the, the product the stability the, during the long term agent. That is to say, we first deposit the potassium solid on the carbon paper during charging, during discharging process. And then after aging the product for a specific time, and then use the titration method to quantify the, the, the residue amount. After the titration result, you can see that. The potassium superoxide amount residue, the, the amount uh, barely changing upon cycles. This is different from the um, another the similar sample, the sodium superoxide, which is a typical the discharge product of sodium oxygen batteries. But different from the uh, the excellent sum, the stability of the potassium superoxide, the sodium superoxide its amount decreases a lot upon the agent. And uh, this is due to the self disproportionation of the sodium superoxide to epoxide during aging process. It also highlights the unique advantage of the, uh, the excellent stability of the so, uh, potassium superoxide. So, a brief summary here is that we focus on analyzing the reversibility of the potassium oxygen electrochemistry and demonstrate the one electron transport process. Uh, and excellent demonstrate excellent long term stability of potassium uh, superoxide. And the more important the conclusion we can draw is that the superoxide is definitely not super reactive in potassium superoxide, as many have assumed. Uh, let's move on. So, and we also know that the directing utilizing the, the ambient air is ultimate goal for all the, the metal oxygen batteries, but the prior study has limited to the pure oxygen. 
And uh, so can you imagine that you have to always wear a heavy oxygen tank in, uh, on your electrical vehicle in the future? It's not uh, impractical for wide application. So the, the, we always emphasize that can directly use uh, the abundant oxygen source from the, on Earth is uh, one typical advantage of the oxygen batteries. So here we propose whether we can directly utilize the ambient air as the oxygen source to power the metal oxygen batteries. Uh, so if this succeed, we will say you, in the future you want to power your electrical vehicle, you just need to use your air blower or maybe just leave your hair dryer to, to power the fresh the air, the ambient air into your uh, battery system and then you can start your vehicle. It's very uh, promising, I would say. Uh, and the good news is that uh, for us, we want to propose uh, placing the air batteries prototype. The good news is that we have already know that the metal, the potassium and, and the cathode, potassium superoxide, that does not react with the major nitrogen in ambient air. And the potassium superoxide also stable in oxygen. So the last question is that, is the potassium superoxide still stable with the carbon dioxide and the, the trace moisture in the ambient air? So to mimic the sign reaction in the potassium air batteries, uh, with the commercial the potassium superoxide powder was agent in our design homemade setup with the agent in the dry carbon dioxide and the wet carbon dioxide in the presence of the moisture. And after the gas chromatography, the GC and the Raman analysis, we could see that one agent in the uh, the wet carbon dioxide in the presence of the moisture. The, there is a uh, oxygen evolution and the potassium bicarbonate byproduct formation for one agent the potassium superoxide. This indicates the sign reaction as shown here. But one agent in dry carbon dioxide in the absence, absence of the moisture, there is no detectable the oxygen evolution and no the byproduct. The, Mm, the byproduct formation that in case that gave us a piece of important information is that the potassium superoxide is stable with the carbon dioxide uh, with the dry carbon dioxide and more importantly we have already know the potassium superoxide is stable with the nitrogen with the oxygen and with the dry carbon dioxide that means that potassium superoxide is highly stable if the air is dry and also we know it's much easier for us to dry the air the ambient air, just use a moisture trap, trap to remove the moisture. So with that knowledge, we have assembled the potassium air batteries by employing the dry air as a castle. And the assembled the potassium air dry air batteries shows the recorded lifespan, which is even, which is even better than that the case with using the high purity the oxygen. And, and we know the the reduce uh, the oxygen the partial pressure in the ambient air atmosphere uh, would lower the both the discharge and charge plateau of the air battery, but it still shows a very what what low voltage gap in the in our proposed air batteries. And also, uh, the more importantly is that for our proposed plastic oxygen batteries, we do not need the high purity oxygen anymore. What we need is dry, dry is ambient air. And the only thing we need to do is just to remove the moisture before the purging the ambient air. So that's very uh, impressive, right? And uh, after talking about the castle part, then moving to the anode part. Uh, our previous research members has mentioned the limitation of the potassium oxygen batteries is due to the highly uh, usage of the highly reactive the potassium metal. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, this is due to highly reactive the potassium metal can uh, occur sign reaction between the with the electrolyte and the oxygen crossover from cathode. And you can see that after the battery failure, the cycle the potassium, the surface you can find a, a yellowish the byproduct surface layer consists, consists of the potassium superoxide. And uh, obviously, the 
the anode protection is a focus of the potassium oxygen batteries research. Uh, I and my collaborator first propose a, a new laser reactive the armor strategy for the potassium anode the protection. And we first utilize the sulfur dopants in the graphene to guide the nucleation and growth of potassium suboxide byproduct layer. And the result is the layer anchored on the outer the graphene surface layer, which would function as a barrier layer for preventing the oxygen from further corroding the interior of the potassium anode. And we can say that with uh, the protected the potassium anode still show the metal luster after long-term cycling. And also uh, we have we cannot find the byproduct, the, the accumulation for the protected version. So uh, but we have always emphasized that we have always worried about the possible the safety hazard with the possible dendrite growth when we're using the potassium metal. Uh, to mitigate the safety concern, we can just use the, the graphite as the anode to replace use, uh, using the potassium, uh, potassium metal. Uh, the the re reversible the integration of potassium ion into graphite into layer make it a promising anode pro uh, alternative for potassium ion batteries. But the current, uh, the, and also we know that the graphite is much cheaper than that of the metal potassium. And, uh, but the current graphite anode still suffer from the large volume expansion and show a poor lifespan due to the large volume expansion. And we know that the, uh, the good SCI can help alleviate the volume expansion and help improve the, the graphite, the cycle life. So, and the SCI formation is strongly dependent on the electrolyte recipe and so uh, the electrolyte selection is very important. Uh, here we use the potassium, the graphite half cell set up to evaluate the potassium ion storage capability. And uh, the previous research has revealed that uh, using a high concentration electrolyte from the, uh, by increasing the salt concentration can help the form a durable the, uh, SCI on the graphite surface layer which would help the be beneficial for improving its uh, cycle life. But we know that the high concentration electron in indicates that we have to add a lot, a lot of the salt that would, in that would increase the electronide cost. So it's not impractical for application. Here, we propose to add a kind of the low polarity, the co-solvent, highly for fluorinated ether to dilute the concentrated electronide to form a, a so-called localized high, concentri high concentration electronite. And the added co-solvent will not facilitate the solvation structure, but also, but instead it would just to lower the parent electronite, the concentration and decrease the salt cost. And the molarity of the, the different recipe uh, is, is shown here. And by comparison, we can say compared to the case uh, used the low concentration and the high concentration, the the graphite uh, cycled in the uh, in the in our proposed uh, localized high concentration electrolyte uh, showing the red curves. Uh, it shows a uh, uh, larger enhanced uh, the reversible specific capacity and uh, enhanced the chromatic efficiency. Uh, for the detailed water profile, we can see after the first uh, for, first cycle after the SCI buildup, the graphite can show a very reversible and high the uh, capacity of around 200, 200 milliampere per grams, uh, even after the 300 cycles. And uh, the optical image shows that the plasticated graphite shows a typical brown, brown color which is consistent with the previous research. After realizing the reversible the graphite, we, want, we still want to construct to co couple with oxygen castle to build up the so-called potassium ion oxygen for cell. But we have just uh, uh, during the battery buildup, we have met uh, electronite as a dilemma. That is to say, 
we have realized we have realized the reversible graphite surface in the in a salt called KFSI using this kind of salt. But the problem is that the KFSI salt is not stable and is susceptible to the euclidean attack from the superoxide anion. And you can see the the superoxide potassium superoxide as uh, superoxide anion would uh, induce the KFSI salt the severe the composition. Uh, although we can use another salt called the KTFSI, this KTFSI is stable uh, in the presence of the potassium superoxide or the superoxide anion. But the problem is that the KTFSI cannot, when we use this this uh, salt, cannot realize the reversible graphite. And so, in brief, uh, the dilemma of the electron is that for the anode part, we use the one kind of salt KFSI for forming a stable SEI. But for the cathode part, we have to use another salt KTFSI for to be stable with the superoxide anion. To solve these problems, we have just proposed a two-step artificial strategy uh, to address this issue. That is to say, we first to uh, also uh, assemble a potassium graphite half cell in KFSI system for, uh, for forming a stable SCI on the graphite surface followed by the potassiation. Then we transfer the potassiated graphite with artificial SCI in a new system using the KTFSI, the electronized recipe, and then just couple with the oxygen cell to, to uh, build the, the full cell. That the strategy enable us to uh, utilize a combined advantage of the KFSI for forming the stable SEI and also utilizing the KTFSI for its stability with the superoxide anion and potassium superoxide. And also this uh, strategy, I would say, represents a step towards achieving a holistic, the anode uh, electronite cathode capability. And a brief summary here is that we propose a new the strategy for the potassium anode protection. And also, uh, furthermore, we have just uh, proposed to use the graphite to produce the potassium anode and propose to and uh, realize the reversible graphite anode in a newly the recipe, electron recipe. And also, last, uh, we have just proposed a new artificial SCR strategy to address the electron dilemma when we assemble a full cell. Uh, at NAS, I would say, uh, despite being the youngest metal oxygen technology, the potassium oxygen batteries, which are characteristic of the single electron transfer process, uh, still the most uh, recharge, most promising the rechargeable metal oxygen batteries technology, with the combined advantage of the high energy efficiency, low cost, and the good energy density. But the, the fact is that the the, the development of the plasma oxygen batteries is overshadowed by the lithium oxygen and sodium oxygen batteries due to its, due to its lower theoretic energy density and the usage of the highly reactive the potassium metal. Uh, but I would say for me, I would say we should not focus too much on the theoretic energy density because for a practical cell, we have to consider uh, many other factors before utilizing a practical cell. At least we should also consider the cost and the energy efficiency. This is also the unique advantage of the potassium oxygen batteries over the lithium oxygen and sodium oxygen. And also as this table shows that, we can see that compared to the lithium oxygen and sodium oxygen, the potassium oxygen batteries, the cathode chemistry is relatively much cleaner and with minor sign reactions. And uh, for the metallic potassium, we can also just use a uh, much safer the graphite to replace the uh, usage of the metallic potassium. And what's more important, we have demonstrated that we can just use the uh, ambient air atmosphere just to remove the uh, moisture in the ambient air just to, and use this uh, ambient air as oxygen source to power the potassium oxygen source. This is also the unique advantage of the potassium oxygen cell over the lithium oxygen and sodium oxygen counterparts. And uh, the objective, objective of this talk is just to uh, 
highlight the unique advantage of class oxygen and clarify the misconception uh, prompted by the, the LAMPS website and also the discuss the current challenges and express our perspective on how to overcome it. Uh, and as I was to appreciate, thank you very, very much, uh, the support from my advisor and my group members, friends, and all. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention.